Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. One of the first lessons most new gardeners learn, usually the hard way, is that growing plants outside of their growing zone is very difficult and requires either a ton of work or in extreme situations, simply fails. Growing zones are defined by Environment Canada as the relationship between plants and the local climate. If you are looking to figure out what your growing zone is, a quick Google search of your community with the term growing zone behind it usually brings this information up. Generally knowing the growing zone of the plants that you're purchasing is a great tool to know whether or not it will grow well in your area. Just because a plant is marked as doing optimally in another growing zone doesn't mean you can't grow it in your garden and get a great harvest with little effort. On today's episode, I'm going to talk about one of the strategies that I've been implementing in order to acclimate crops to my own garden. For the purpose of today's video, I will use tomatoes as an example crop. However, the method works with many other crops. It is important to start with an open pollinated heirloom variety. Crosses or hybrids are not stable enough year after year, and you will likely end up with inconsistent results. For some tomato varieties like the pink brandy wine that I enjoy, the season here is simply not long enough. This often leaves me needing to pull green tomatoes before the frost damages them. This is not optimal, as tomatoes gain much more flavor and nutrients the longer they are allowed to ripen on the vine. Now you can't just save seeds from any of the tomatoes that ripen on your vine. With a little bit of strategy, you can improve your strain year after year. Let me show you how I do it. Start by identifying the challenges that you face with a particular variety that you've chosen. This method can be applied to things like blossom end rot prevention, disease resistance, shade tolerance, and heat tolerance among many other characteristics. In order to improve the speed of the ripening tomatoes over generations, I save the seeds from the first ripe tomato of the year. Now I know this is hard as I really want to eat my first ripe tomato from the vine, but saving them is an investment in the future. By saving the seeds from the first tomato year after year, you will begin to get a plant strain that will produce ripe fruit faster. Now I mentioned earlier on that this process does take years, and it is a very old technique that humans have been implementing since the dawn of agriculture. It's taken crops like tomatoes that were once restricted to extremely small climactic conditions and have allowed humans to grow them all the way from Yellowknife to Melbourne. This method is called selective breeding, and best of all, it can be applied to more than one trait at a time. If you are in a race with the first frost and struggle with blight issues, you can select the first ripening tomato from the plant that comparatively did better resisting blight. For this type of selection, you will have to grow more than one plant of the same variety in your garden. There are other techniques such as crossbreeding that can allow you to achieve some similar results. When you use crossbreeding, usually the crop takes on a combination of the characteristics of the parent plants. You may lose your favorite variety. This method, however, is faster for developing disease and temperature resistant strains and new varieties. With selective breeding, as time goes on and you are able to reach your desired strain, you can continue to improve your variety by selecting for traits such as requiring less water and other resources to grow and produce. Further helping improve the sustainability of your household garden. If more of us acclimate varieties to our backyard gardens and share them with local gardeners, not only will this help maintain the genetic diversity of our food supply, but producing more food locally will help with our food security regionally, all the while keeping up with the ever-changing climate. Thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day.